Definitely seeing some issues here in the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area. Some of the shortages are spreading and seeing a lot of issues both at Aldi and Walmart kind of lining up. Uh, it's not just one place or the other. It's not just these sporadic things. It's starting to be some more systemic, uh, systemic issues here and there. Now, I did go to Aldi and Walmart yesterday morning uh, relatively early, a lot earlier than I normally go. I usually go in the afternoon to kind of keep it consistent, but I was out and about earlier. Uh, so this was between like 8.30 and 9 o'clock uh, for Aldi and Walmart. So that will give you an idea that uh, these shelves should be a lot more well stocked and we're kind of be kind of projecting kind of what the end stocks look like throughout the rest of the day. So uh, we're going to be a little more aggressive on the, uh, the examination of these shelves and just kind of giving you an idea of how much better stock the shelves tend to be earlier in the morning. Uh, if you are having trouble finding the stuff that you want, you might want to get there early. Without further ado, let's jump right into the pictures. Aldi, the gallon jugs of vinegar are looking fairly good. This is early in the morning, so how many jugs were there in the afternoon and in the evening after everyone had gotten their take of them? Probably a lot less. So this does maybe uh, kind of land us similar to where we're seeing with just one or two jugs left towards the end of the day, depending on how, how many uh, jugs get purchased during the day. But definitely not a full stack of them. Now, when it comes to frozen pizzas, noticing frozen pizzas at Aldi and when we get over to Walmart, you're going to see uh, significant shortages of frozen pizzas across the board. So I'm not sure if there's something going on with that or if there's just a local disruption, but uh, frozen pizzas do did look pretty dismal yesterday morning. Uh, frozen chicken uh, from the upper angle where I was kind of standing looked lower, but I, uh, with this picture taken from a lower angle, uh, you can kind of see some of the chicken in the back there. So that, that does look like it wasn't out, even though uh, when, when I walked by, it looked a little more like it might be out in some of those bays. Water, though, was, I mean, we got the middle bottle pallet here, but we got several pallets that are uh, looking pretty low right there. Uh, no, no telling whether they have another pallet of each of those in the back or not. Uh, hard to say, but um, that, that's just something I noticed was that uh, there were some bays kind of a little low on that. Sausage and some, some of the varieties of hot dogs having empty bays here as well. So some of the meats, uh, seeing plenty of bacon out there, but some of the sausages are having some issues, particularly like hot dogs and those type of things. Whipped cream cheeses, um, some varieties over at Walmart we're going to see too. Cream cheese is not fully, fully stocked. Um, there seems to be some li limited issues here and there. Uh, so you can see that right here with Aldi. Some of the milk products, uh, particularly 2% milk here in this picture, but um, other varieties of gallons of milk and such like that looked fairly good at Aldi. Another thing that we're kind of seeing out there um, is, and people aren't really talking about it, but we're seeing some issues with ketchup. And that's, uh, that's an interesting thing. Uh, uh, a previous week saw some uh, pretty significant drawdowns in the stock that they had of ketchup at Walmart. Now, what, what we've been seeing has been canned tomatoes in general have been kind of low, and we'll see a little bit more of that over at Walmart even this week. Now, the generic white rice, the cheap long grain rice, they were out of, and that was uh, kind of telling. Also, we're going to see over at Walmart that the rice issue did not look good over there either. Um, not terrible, but definitely not heading in the right direction. So if you want to buy the more expensive stuff, the jasmine or basmati, which does not store as well as the white rice. The white rice, the cheap stuff, is, is the stuff that lasts the longest. Um, the other stuff has a lot more protein and oils and everything like that in there so that it, it, it tends to uh, uh, go bad a lot faster, uh, particularly like brown rice especially. Pasta varieties, seeing three pasta varieties out at Aldi was uh, once again kind of, I mean, this is something in trend. 
And I'm hearing from a lot of you guys out there seeing the pasta shortages there too. Durham wheat, bad harvest in the last year has definitely driven prices up and there is shortages out there of Durham wheat. And that's causing production issues, particularly on the cheap end of pasta. And Aldi, of course, makes cheap end of pasta. Um, mashed potatoes, so they had some packets just strewn on the shelf there of the name brand packets of mashed potatoes. And the generic did not seem to have uh, any more boxes back there. there. What you can see right there is what they had of the generic uh, bags of uh, mashed potatoes. And of course, they always seem to run out of the other ones faster. The buttery seems to be the last one to go. And uh, that's what a good bit of those packets are right there in that picture. In the canned meat section, um, one thing we've noticed for a while is that they have not had the canned hams. And they, they just haven't been having that. Also, the generic corned beef hash has not been there either. Um, back in the day, I was telling you, pick up those canned hams because, I mean, I mean, as long as you like them, I think they're a significant better quality and kind of a treat over uh, things like the luncheon meats and the, and the spam and all that kind of stuff. Uh, at least it kind of tastes more like a, you know, a roasted ham when you, when you get it from those cans. But uh, other than that, things seem to be kind of where they've been recently. Baking soda was noticeably absent. They had baking powder though, so you can kind of use the baking soda, uh, the baking um, uh, soda, uh, baking powder for some of the baking soda issues, but uh, um, not not all things. Salt was looking pretty good. Some of the vegetable oils. Um, were a little less stocked here, but they seem to be fairly well stocked. And noticeably, the, the spice section looked fairly good at Aldi here today, uh, well, yesterday. Uh, we do want to thank our sponsor, Genesis Gold Group. If you want to get some more information from Genesis Gold Group, there'll be a link at the end of the video. You fill out your information, and they send you an information packet, and you also have a way that you can contact them to ask them any questions um, about uh, what you can do with your IRAs or 401ks. Over at Walmart here, we have the, uh, the Cool Whip section. The generic Cool Whip was fronted. This was early in the day, right? So uh, that's... It should have been fully stocked, but it wasn't. They didn't get a full shipment in. Uh, and then just a lot of bays empty. They uh, did not stock overnight um, some of these areas. And th there weren't, it wasn't like there were a bunch of workers out in the morning to, to go stocking, right? It's, they weren't stocked and pretty much most of the workers out there were, were picking. They were picking things for deliveries and picking things for uh, pickups. They, they weren't out there like with pallets and putting stuff on the shelf. Uh, in the morning, it's what was set out the previous night is kind of what happened. So a lot of the breads in the frozen section, um, issues there. Even some of the ice cream, particularly the ice cream sandwiches, kind of caught my eye there. Uh, frozen potatoes looked fairly good. Now, not fully stocked. Yeah, I mean, you'd kind of expect to see it fully stocked in the morning, but uh, not quite so but uh, not terribly either, but this probably looked pretty rough by the end of the day. And the frozen pizzas, that, there were a whole bunch of varieties of frozen pizzas that just were gone, wiped out, just like whole sections just empty in the frozen pizzas. Uh, pierogies were, were pretty low, but you know, still have options early in the day at least. And this just kind of points to the fact, once again, um, if they get a little bit in, they're going to put it on the shelf. And in the morning, that's really your best time to get stuff. So if you're having an issue getting, getting things, and I understand if, you, if you're getting off work and then you go to, uh, you know, you get off work and you, and you go to the store in the evening and you might find a lot more gaps than somebody who has the, uh, the luxury of being able to go first thing in the morning. But there are some shaped sugar treats <laughs> that were kind of missing. Uh, just grab a picture of that. 
Uh, going without that, it's not going to kill anybody though, right? But going with it might kill some people. Um, and then we have uh, the creamers, some of the bigger creamers, not fully stocked. Coffee looked fairly good, but kind of gave me kind of the feel that uh, by the end of the day, uh, this is probably looking pretty ragged. Um, you can see um, they didn't actually put stack the boxes too deep. Uh, that, sh that whole front row has a Maxwell house, but uh, nothing behind it. So noticing that that's not fully stocked. So not sure what that would look like by the end of the day. Not sure what the vinegar will look like by the end of the day either. Um, but that's, um, it looked like it didn't start off fully stocked uh, for the day there. Rice was not awesome. I mean, but not, not terrible either. Um, there's some gaps there with the, the on the 20 pounders and of rice and, and pinto beans. But you can get what you need still. If you if you jump on it, you can get what you need. And we're seeing that everywhere. With the rice shortages um, mostly being reflected in the United States and just price increases at this point. But uh, some other places in the world are seeing genuine shortages already on uh, their store shelves. The meat section looked fairly well stocked. This is the quasi meat, like chilies and stuff like that. The tuna um, had a few little bays, kind of not fully stocked. Um, but when it came to the, the kind of the hardcore meat, it looked fairly good. Um, even even the multi packs of chicken were were pretty well stocked. Um, Keystone meat still the the Keystone pork. For some reason, it's still not being stocked. And then like the name brand canned chicken is looking not so good, but the, uh, the generic cheaper chicken cans are uh, looking pretty good. Um, and we'll, we'll show you an option towards the end here of where, where you can get the canned chicken at a fairly decent price right now. Um, canned chicken has gone up quite a bit and uh, used to be able to get it like just under $2 a can. Uh, for the 12.5 ounces, and now it's, you know, you're lucky to find them at three bucks a can, even in the multi-packs. But um, some of the the baked beans looked a little thin there. Baked beans is a great thing to stock up on um, because there's just a lot of calories in those cans, and the sugary syrup kind of keeps better than, you know, some of the other kind of things um, once you open the can, right? But uh, there's just a lot of calories in each can, and it's, it's just great. It, the beans in there do balance out the, uh, the pasta or, or the uh, rice, right? So you get the beans and rice uh, thing going on there with the, uh, uh, with the amino acids and all that kind of stuff, right? How they give you the complete protein. Mashed potatoes, some of the packets were kind of sparse. And a few of the boxes, like name brand boxes, they have Idahoan, but no Hungry Jack boxes. So that notice that we're keeping an eye on the uh, canned vegetables because we had some issues before. Uh, canned corn was a little thin, uh, but the canned green beans looked fairly well stocked there. Um, by and large, they're fairly well. It looked like the name brand stuff was a little thinner than normal. So. Um, that, that is what it is. Flour was low, and uh, you can see, I don't know if someone came in and wiped them out or whatever, but notice on that second shelf there, we have a bunch of the uh, flour bags stuck on the front there and with a gap behind that. So uh, someone came to, to stock this and they just stocked the front row. Uh, maybe they just didn't stock that back row back there. Or, I don't know, just uh, doesn't, not fully stocked there. Um, and I don't think people wiped them out that early in the morning. Uh, some of the lards, not, not looking super great there. Vegetable oils, some of those vegetable oils, uh, soybean oil, right, fronted. Um, there's like, there were some in the back and then, then there's some in the front, but there wasn't any like in the middle. So that just kind of uh, shows that there, it's like partial fronting. I don't know. Um, but you can kind of see that with the vegetable oils. Also, we're still seeing the canola oil still being expanded to kind of 
take over some of that soybean space. And it just seems like they're kind of playing games back and forth with that. You can kind of see the, uh, the gaps there in the uh, soybean oil. And then just that some pretty big gaping holes with the canola oil. Anyway, um, with salt, last time I was there, like the salt, the generic salt was wiped out. Now they, they did kind of, uh, the back row there is the name brand salt, uh, but uh, they did get some plain salt in, but they did still were, uh, did not have the iodized salt. So even though there's in the space where the iodized salt's supposed to be, but those, those are still plain salts there, which just odd. Just odd that, that that's kind of what's going on. The veg, uh, the uh, olive oils, the fancier olive oils and that type of thing, just a, a lot of kind of gaps here and there. Certain products not looking so great. Spices over here looking a little more ragged than what they looked like over at Aldi. Aldi looked fairly well stocked. Here, a little ragged. And like I said, some canned tomato issues here and there. Um, so some varieties are a little harder to get now, but by and large, they're still on the shelf. Egg noodles, um, some, some issues there. Again, like I said, this is early in the day, so uh, I'm being a little more aggressive on my, uh, on my criticisms, of course. Um, Never seen quite so many bow ties. Normally the bow ties are a much smaller section. The fact that they've spread the bow ties out this much is kind of weird. Same thing with the rotinis. Just um, a number of these. Where's, I mean, the spaghettis are down on the bottom shelf. Like, that's just kind of weird. Like, what's the most popular pasta out there? Spaghetti, right? And yet they have them in the most inconvenient spot there. And, uh, and not a whole lot there. So just um, the, not any penne and just some of the more popular kinds of pasta, just none of the generics. And that's just, that was quite noticeable, quite noticeable. And some of those other things are fronted. You can see that. You look behind there and you can kind of see that some of these boxes are fronted. Gatorade, seeing some issues with Gatorade, and that was kind of surprising. We haven't really had any Gatorade issues for about a year now, but uh, just it just looked low. I don't know if they just missed a shipment there or what. Dairy section looking kind of ragged again. You'd think that this would be fully stocked at the beginning of the day, but chocolate milks and some of the specialty creams and stuff like that. Then you go over the half and half and the heavy heavy whipping cream, that kind of stuff, just not fully stocked. Coffee creamers, some of them having a little bit of issues here and there. Not what you'd expect to see first thing in the day. Uh, cream cheeses, uh, some varieties missing and going for the tubs as well as the bricks. Uh, margarine spreads and stuff like that, not stacked double deep. They did not have a full load to put out, and, and that's, that's evident. That's evident. Um, when it comes to the dips and other sour creams and cottage cheeses, uh, not fully stocked there either. Cookie doughs were kind of noticeably low as well, which is kind of odd. Some of these look uh, like they've been sitting there for a while too, which is kind of ick. Uh, this is over at Sam's Club. Just to give you an idea, I noticed that, uh, now I don't know if this sale is nationwide or not, but Sam's Club, if you have a subscription there, um, looking at not, not everything there is a great deal. I, I think they got some great deals on meat. Like when they mark down their meat, they chop the, the price down 25%. And I get some, so I got some uh, round uh, beef for like $4.11 uh, a pound, which for me is nice. And I, I, I like the tougher meat for steaks and stuff like that. It's kind of weird, but um, that's what my family's always eaten. And so, uh, uh, you know, I'm happy to have my steaks at $4.11 um, marked down, you know, chopped them up and threw it in the freezer. But uh, chicken breast um, in canned, six packs, 
uh, for 1284. Yeah, uh, you're looking. Uh, it worked out to being like two dollars and fifteen cents per can. Um, that's pretty good, actually. Two dollars and fifteen cents a can. That's, you know, I still have a ton. I have a ridiculous amount of canned chicken, so I, I didn't grab any, but just kind of give you an idea out there. Spam, you're looking at $2.83 if you buy the big bulk pack. Um, it was earlier, you know, even down, it was like $2.50-ish before, um, but, uh, but still that's, that's a better price than what you're going to see out there uh, most places. Now this is, like I said, an eight pack, so uh, you're getting quite a bit of spam, but uh, just to give you an idea. And then always, folks, just don't turn your nose up at the ramen noodles. Uh, especially if you have anyone in your household that will eat the ramen. Um, the, it's a lot of salt, which is actually good in a crisis situation. Um, you, if you're sweating a lot, you need a lot of salt to kind of balance off your electrolytes and all that kind of stuff. So um, ramen noodles are not bad, especially if you got growing kids, uh, teenagers that need to eat a lot of stuff. Um, teenagers oftentimes don't mind ramen. So... Um, it's cheap stuff to, to pack up. I mean, you're looking at basically the calories for a day at like a buck fifty a day or so, which is, that's almost as cheap as rice, right? And these things are already packaged. Now they will spoil a lot faster than uh, rice will, but, uh, and you can't really just mylar them up. Um, but ramen noodles are a cheap thing to just get a couple blocks of those big cases of those and you and most people can afford to put a couple of those cases away and that's like a very good first step into expanding your pantry if you're just uh, wanting to do that real fast all right there's some ideas let us else all know what you're kind of doing to stock up um, or other ideas that you have or tips or tricks that you want to share with other people and please do be letting us know what you're seeing in your stores uh, use the word update on a comment on this channel um, any one of the videos and that will get to the right place. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to uh, check out uh, some information from Genesis Gold Group, there's a link right on the screen there. Or if you want to check out another video from this channel, there's one on the screen there too. Thanks so much for watching. Steve Poplar of the Poplar Report, out.